in this example, again, we're relating these to your perfect square trinomials. Is x squared a square term? Is negative 2 a square term? Can you take the square root of negative 2? No. What about negative 1? Is that a square term? No. So I know this is not a perfect square trinomial already, right? I can't factor it like I did my bonus problem. So a couple things we're going to do. First thing is I'm going to fact group my first two terms. Actually, let's group my first two terms just like this. However, again, to find the perfect square trinomial, you have to have your first term be a square term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 2. Now, yes? It would be. I just didn't decide to do that yet. Thanks. So. Does everybody see um, factor there? So does everybody see, though, now inside the parentheses, this is something I can create a perfect square with, right? I have an x squared. That's, remember how all of those started with an x squared, right? So that's good. You don't have to have an x squared. It could be x to the, you know, you could have some crazy stuff. But in reality, you need to have a term that's squared. x squared works. But I don't have a constant that completes my square, right? You guys agree with me? I need something that completes my square. So, or it creates my perfect square trinomial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my b divided by 2 squared. Okay? And therefore, this in this case, it's negative 4 divided by 2 squared. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is equal to 4. Add that. So hopefully you guys get to this point. But then we need to kind of elaborate on something. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let me ask you a question. Are these two equations equal to each other? They're not equal? Why are they not equal? Somebody give me a justification. Yes, Princeton? Yeah, this one, yeah, uh, did straight up property applies, right? This is obvious. Does everybody agree with me? That's kind of, a, everybody understands that this is really not equal because really that ends up being 16 when you multiply them, right? Well, guys, it's the same thing. This is not true. This 4 is really being multiplied by a negative 2. So you're not adding 4 and subtracting 4. You're adding a 4 that got multiplied by a negative 2. So you have to subtract a 4 that's being multiplied by negative 2. <coughs> really, really important step. <coughs> but does that make sense? You're not adding 4. That 4 is inside parentheses that just got multiplied by a negative, that are multiplied by a negative 2, Zoe. So therefore, when you subtract a 4, you got to make sure you multiply that by negative 2 as well. All right. Now again, is this a binomial squared? Is it? Is it a binomial? Oh, I'm sorry, is it a perfect square trinomial? Does it look like the one that we already did in our warm up? Yes. Every single time, I'm going to tell you guys, you don't even need to think about this. Every single time you do this, you are creating a perfect square trinomial. It's going to factor to a binomial squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So y equals negative 2 times x minus 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 minus 1 is going to be a positive 7. Vertex is going to be 2 comma 7. And you can see that's a negative, so it goes down. So therefore, that's an absolute max. Okay. And again, guys, usually what 